Dubber, on the face of it, is a core recording platform as a service. We're a true native cloud uh, platform, and um, James will take you through some uh, questions and and some insights into some of the uh, the products as part of this um, as part of this meeting. So uh, we we have a simple mission and a simple belief, which is core recording um, is a traditional business which has some major players who are valued in the in the multi billions, um, who concentrate predominantly on contact center, financial services, and drive outcomes through hardware and hosted solutions. We believe that any business anywhere in the world should be able to take call recording as a service simply by contacting their telco and switching it on immediately. Now that's a very, very simple, effective outcome. To do that, we've deployed a uh, hugely scalable, non-trivial build of a global platform which services some of the largest telcos in the world across all the continents. Uh, on the planet. So, um, very quickly, we disrupt a traditional market. Um, you'll, you'll no doubt see if you Google cloud call recording that there are hundreds of providers. Um, it's difficult in half an hour to explain exactly why that's not the case, but we are, we are literally the only um, architect, we're the only cloud platform that's built for, for purpose, and our purpose is to be able to record an entire telco network. Why are we choosing that? We're choosing that because the telcos themselves are in transformation, their customers are in transformation, and if you're going to record calls and uh, interaction, you go straight to the source, which is not the customer's premises, but actually to the telco network itself. So we're the, we're the industry leader uh, in, that, uh, in that sector. <clears throat> Scalability is something I'll leave to James, but uh, it goes without saying that in order to actually deliver the outcome across a telco network, we need to scale to a level that no other recording service has, has been to before. And that is a core attribute of the platform and also the business model. And it's also uh, a key feature in our operating leverage for the, for the company moving forward. Perhaps the, the key element on the page that you're looking at is actually the term essential. So when we say we're an essential service, we're actually built at the core of a telco network. The telcos are currently trying to move their own customers, not new customers, but their own customers onto their platform of choice, which in layman's terms is a digital platform. So the legacy PSTN, Copper, uh, etc. networks, a, a telco like AT&T in the States is trying to move its own customers onto their platform of choice, which is easier to manage, less costly, and provides the opportunity for value-added services. The way to um, understand the business is that five years ago, Morgan's probably had a PABX, as you would call it, a phone system which was centered around your server room. And it allows you to do all the things you would expect, which is dial interstate, call forwarding, etc. cetera. Um, a telco would have come along and um, persuaded Morgan's to move that from their own infrastructure into the telco network itself and serve it virtually. And that is a platform called Broadsoft Broadworks. There are 650 telcos around the world offering that to their customers, and that's our short-term target market. Broadsoft themselves then moved that infrastructure from the telco um, in, um, layer into a single cloud platform called BroadCloud. So one of the key aspects of our story is that although we have 92 contracts with telcos for their own network, we are the exclusive and only provider of call recording and data capture on the broad cloud platform and will be the only one since we're actually embedded into its core design. The, the significance of that is that the 650 telcos over a period of the next couple of years will be moving their services predominantly from their own hosted PABX into this single cloud platform. So there's, there's natural growth there. And depending on whichever telco you talk to, it's usually between 4 and 11% of their business customers they believe will need the call recording as a service. Now, why do telcos offer it? It's because if they're going to offer you a, sing, a, a cloud solution for your telephony, you don't want the old-fashioned um, recording service that's sitting in your server room. You want to move everything out of that and have them buy the whole thing as a feature-rich um, uh, telephony solution. So uh, we'll come back to the broad cloud um, situation uh, towards the end of the presentation because a significant development is that that, that broad, broad soft and broad cloud transition, that single global platform, became so successful that the competitor in the industry, Cisco, bought the company a year ago 
and we believe that has significant ramifications for Deborah and its positioning going forward. So the half year highlights, um, there are three key metrics which we uh, which signify a step change in the company and they're all, they're all growing at a decent rate. Uh, obviously uh, end users are important, will continue to be important and um, they directly affect revenue growth as well. So just on that, I think we flagged in, in our, uh, one of our pre-Christmas updates that January would be fairly flat. The company has achieved a milestone in November and December which was a quantum leap. We've maintained that in January. Um, the reason why it's not grown much in January is because the telcos themselves have embargo periods and so the growth will continue from February onwards in a similar curve, obviously without being decisive as to exactly what that curve looks like, but we're expecting this to continue exponentially um, throughout the, the, the future of the company. The key metric for us, and I think long term for everybody going forward, is still the middle one, which is the number of telcos. Um, so that's the big leap there where we've basically doubled the amount of, of, of telco contracts. This is telcos who've agreed to take and deploy our platform as a core layer on their network and we doubled this in one quarter. This metric we believe will not slow down in the short term because the reason for this is that as the industry itself has homogenized under the Cisco label, uh, Cisco themselves are walking us uh, through the front door of their telco customers and enabling us to leverage our position as the provider on broad cloud to also acquire direct contracts for other networks outside the broad cloud on each um, platform on each of those telcos. So we would walk into a US telco, for example, that has users on broad cloud. We've already got them under contract through the broad cloud agreement, the Cisco broad cloud agreement. They have other networks such as Broadworks or such, such as Cisco um, HCS or even their mobile network. They want the same user experience for all their customers. Cisco want the same user experience. Obviously, for us, that means that we get telco contracts um, at, at a decent rate. Now, it's very important because I think one of the investment highlights of the company is the, uh, the barrier to entry here. Um, getting a telco to implement your network um, or your, your product as a core of their network is not a trivial um, fact, it's not a trivial feat. So we are validated uh, by world leaders at every level and when we say every level we mean the telcos themselves, AT&T, the world's largest telco and certainly in America, the reference point for any telco uh, in, in North America took 14 months to actually test and try and break our platform and now endorses it. It's our greatest endorsement on the telco side. From a distribution perspective, uh, we also have um, an impressive, I think, uh, list of world leaders. So the telcos themselves are distributors, but also Cisco will become distributors, as we'll explain at the end of the meeting. And um, we did announce in, in September a technology partnership with IBM. The technology aspect of that enables IBM to capture data in a way they can't currently capture it and this opens the door for them to um, actually use their digital solutions such as IBM Watson in a way that they've not been able to before. So we're quite prominent at the moment in the IBM world and, and, and you'll see some traction in terms of um, you know movement in that area. IBM announced in September is forming a, a reasonable part of our revenue at the moment and, and including the growth and we expect that to continue. So the way that works is that IBM go into their customers, they sell their insights via Watson which obviously are a world leading. In order to get those insights the customer needs to connect uh, to Dubber and we get the revenue through our telco partner and IBM then sell their services for which we get a substantial part of that revenue as well. So that's uh, a brief outline of the IBM model. So telco growth we think is going to continue. Uh, we've got 650 on the target list and we hope obviously to, to move towards that with Cisco's help in the near future. <coughs> uh, James is uh, going to take you very quickly through the traditional versus dubber um, comparison because I think it's, if you can give you some headlines it will be easy for you to uh, represent easily to your customers. Your customers will, your clients will always ask you what about this recording service and what about recording phones on your on your iPhone and I think it's, uh, it's probably handy to have uh, an easy answer for that. Uh, as you can see in that slide there we're talking about the comparison between the Dubber platform and the traditional providers in the market today. Uh, obviously we didn't invent call recording and you will see that there's lots of call recording in the market. Uh, as Steve mentioned, we do talk about scale as a, a, a core USP of our platform. Um, and when you compare that to the traditional providers, it's a big difference, a big USP. 
um, the when you talk about the capacity and the abilities of scale, the traditional services out there, or whether it's the enterprise, small business, or even what's been deployed in, in a carrier's network, is around a certain size of recording or a quantity of recording. A big deployment back when you talk about before Dubber, let's say a bank with 4,000 seats, that was a big deployment. When we talk about carriers, we're talking about looking at saying, okay, you've got 14 million mobiles on your network. You've got 140 million mobiles on your network and you talk about AT&T. We built the platform to accommodate scale of that requirement. And that's where one of the biggest things. So the idea is the telco connects to us at the core, right into their core network. We run the service as a managed platform in cloud. Uh, they start sending traffic to us. They send us one call, we record that. They send us a thousand calls or a thousand users, we record that. They scale up to a hundred thousand calls, we record that. They don't have to give us planning or, or start to uh, tell us the capacity. We just s elastically scale, capture it, and then scale back down. And again, that reflects in the, our cost of supply for the service. In storage, traditional services were limited based on storage. So someone told us today that uh, a large financial services company was recording and putting it all on tape. And that was very common. Um, even if the more, I suppose, modern storage was still going to a point where they ran out of storage and they have to go and put it onto an archive system. The only benefit for that was when something went wrong and they'd have to go find the recording. With Dubber, storage is effectively unlimited, which makes it instantly available. So again, it comes back to scalability. A big thing about us is about this openness of platform. All the other traditional vendors are proprietary, so they use proprietary software when they record, when you access it, and how they store it, and how you, the file is actually storing in their system. Proprietary means that you can't take it out and play it somewhere else. You can't take it out and transcribe that with Google. You can't do that. You need their help to get it out of the system. Um, as an example, even a smaller system for two, two, two man operation costs 14 grand to buy and $2,000 a month to maintain. So with Dubber, comparatively, we're a service that might only cost them 30 bucks a month. The speed to market, generally for enterprise wants to deploy call recording, can take you know months or years to deploy. Uh, with Dubber, we can connect to a carrier, uh, literally within eight minutes into their core network. That's into our platform, which can support all of their customers if they wanted to. The quickest of probably getting into market, we've been asked what's the what's the real time to get to market is probably four or five weeks is probably the fastest for a carrier, up to maybe 14 months, which was AT&T, which they tested our platform for 14 months. Um, security comes up and privacy, we've been asked about a lot about that lately. Privacy, you know, I think you've all been told you're being recorded on the phone and this call will be recorded. We do recommend best practice in that and most of the time, uh, most of our customers do that. In relation to security, we get third-party penetration testing done once every three months. If we do a major release, it's done at that time as well. Uh, everything's encrypted and we use pretty much the highest and best quality for security and best practices in regards to that. The comparison to security on if you're on-premise is you're relying upon the person who or the manager who's deploying that and continually making improvements to that. With being cloud, we actually can be more, more secure than anything else that's on-premise. It's actually, if you go into that in detail, it's actually better. Um, and enterprises in Australia are starting to understand that. If you look at cloud, if you go back four years ago, cloud wasn't accepted by the largest enterprises in Australia. So when I say cloud, I mean Amazon, Google, their infrastructure. That's coming at a pace and they're starting to move a lot more services. And if you Google that, about the largest enterprises in Australia have now announced they're doing Amazon first as a strategy. That goes in line completely with our, our strategy and how we've deployed Dubber. Um, in relation to the platform, I'll go give you a, a summary of this from end to end. Uh, we've talked about scale. Everything we build in Dubber is about scale. Uh, everything that we, all the different components are independent in cloud. So it is a true cloud platform deployed in Australia, uh, two locations in the States, Canada, Singapore, Japan, um, Germany, London and Ireland. And everywhere our carriers are that we work with and with their customers, it stores it and, re and records it in that region. It doesn't leave it. Uh, OPEX, most of the time our, our charges are OPEX and the cost for a carrier to deploy this is OPEX. Uh, there, there may be some cost on their side, but in reality, when they start selling it to their users, they pay for the usage. They add a user, they start paying for that. Uh, the openness of our platform, it's not doesn't say that there because we think it's just, it's obviously core to the, the, the service, but now talking to large carriers or large enterprises, the fact that they can record with us 
and let's say, let's take an example of a bank with 36,000 people, they can actually record with us, we can transcribe the call, they can access that through an open API that they can then drag the data out, put that into their own systems and do their own analytics over the top of it. They don't have to work with a, third, a proprietary system to do that. If you look at a game, you probably do some Googling yourself, you can see where the banks are looking at doing this across their whole business. Yeah. Um, we generally supply the, plat the service via two methods. One which is a white labeling, let the carrier take it to their customers as, the, as their brand. And the second one there, which is we enable the carrier to go to market and they sell double directly to the customer, such as Cox and at and in the United States. The application or the service is accessible via a, a web app, which is white labeled and a mobile application, which I can show you. Um, and there's an API. Everything that we build or supply or you see through Dubba is, is backed by the open API. Um, so that means that, so how the API is used, if you don't understand, if you're a carrier, you don't have to come and log into Dubber and add a user. You just literally add it in your system. You tick a box saying James needs call recording, you tick the box that automatically pushes across the notification to our platform saying create the account, create the user, set the plan, set the permissions, and the next call is literally recorded by Dubber and accessible by the user. Exactly what you'd expect any other SaaS application to be used. In relation to the customer, they get their, unique, their own unique API token into their account and they can access, access the content. In a real simple example, I make a recording, it gets stored in Dubber, it's presented in Dubber, but I only access it and play it through Salesforce. I don't have to lock into our platform to play it back. Yep. We heavily talk about unified communications because unified communication is taking PBXs and putting them in cloud effectively, and it's aligned to call recording. But if you start thinking about anything that goes across a telco network, any voice, whether it's mobile, SIP trunking, inbound services, we can capture it. One of the big statements that we make is that we believe that Dubber and AI in general should be on every phone. We actually think that AI will be on every phone. Now, if that sounds like quite a confronting statement, um, if you allow me to be a bit self-indulgent. For those of you unfortunate to be watching Channel 7 on Sunday, you, would have, you, you may have seen James and I on a uh, show on Channel 7 called Bricks and Clicks, uh, a David Koss show, where we were actually invited to talk about AI to the smallest possible businesses in Australia. And uh, they, they were quite frightened about us talking to them. They thought it was all about robotics and somebody was gonna take over their job, etc. AI for us is about capturing a massive amount of data and delivering simple to use applications. So the two that I, th I think I can maybe get some um, mileage out of, for me personally, I take a lot of calls in the car, whether it be to and from work, a lot of those calls turn into meeting requests. The ability to actually say, meet me at my office at 2.30, and the phone call actually sets a calendar invite for me, that's something that's valuable for me, it's easy to consume, it's easy to manage, and I'm happy to pay a, a small amount of money on a monthly basis for it. Moving up the scale slightly, we have a product called Business Assurance, and that is where you may have a customer that you nominate as being important. One of, one of the people in your organization has a conversation with that customer. That call has negative sentiment attached to it, and we're monitoring that in the background. The person who's talking to your important customer may not tell you how badly that call has gone but you'll know because you've actually set the parameters to send you a notification in, in the event that there's ever a negative call with that potential customer. So those two just really low-end examples of AI, which again, we think that businesses can consume easily and, um, and are prepared to pay for. Now we supply those ourselves through our AI engine, but really, as James explained, the platform is open so that if a telco such as British Telecom in the UK decide they want to use Google for transcription, we can do that. If, if somebody wants to use Amazon for transcription, we can do that. It's, it's just plugging it into the platform or it's already plugged into the platform um, on an agnostic basis. Now, the way to market distribution is part of the operating leverage that we've got. So um, you, you might think at the moment, well, there's only limited user cases for call recording. So first of all, let me explain how we're seeing the telco starting to sell this. On the screen, you have an example of a bundle. Um, product managers and telcos take products, features, and bundle them into a package which differentiates them or identifies a certain sector in the market. So we're now seeing, and there's a user case at the end of this presentation, uh, whereby we're seeing um, bundles being put to customers with Dubra as a standard feature. 
Whether they use the service or not at the current rate doesn't matter, we get paid on it. The idea is that the telcos believe, like we do, that AI will be on every phone in some form. You probably won't even recognise it as being AI, it will just be a feature. So to have that as part of a standard package that you offer to business users, we're seeing quite a bit of traction. We expect that to grow exponentially moving forward and we get paid for those users whether they use it or not. To summarise where we're at with the call recording side before we, we talk about the future of the business, one of the great things about the company is that over the past three years uh, we have been validated um, as the platform of choice in the telco sector. There are some references up there, obviously ATT is an obvious one, it's the largest telco in the world and they tested us uh, thoroughly. Um, the Cisco Broad Cloud relationship looks like it could be um, a, a huge area of growth for us. So what if you Google um, Cisco in the last three weeks, they've announced something called Broad Cloud Calling and WebEx Calling. This is where they're using the platform Broad Cloud, which was built for carriers. They're now opening it up to their own existing distribution, their dealer network. Uh, globally and um, if you look at their dealer network globally it's huge companies like Dimension Data down to you know small three-man businesses in Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney etc who sell phone systems. These dealers now are being encouraged not to make revenue by selling boxes but actually to sell Cisco services directly onto Cisco's cloud platform Broadcloud. We are the incumbent embedded recording solution in that. At the moment there is no call recording on that price book should there be call recording on that price book, we have an enormous sales force in excess of 350,000 people ticking boxes as part of a bundle um, as they go about selling their Cisco deals on a daily basis. So we think there's an operating opportunity there as well. IBM, I think we touched on very briefly before. Um, that IBM are another distribution channel for us which we think um, will, will yield success. They have an imperative to actually sell their digital solutions. I think you'll see, as we mentioned earlier, that you'll, you'll see Dubber front and center with, with that push. And it's obviously a great brand and a, get, a great distribution uh, network for us as a company. The business opportunity to wrap up. Here's an example of a user case. So when people say to you, you know, how long has Dubber been around? What, what does it do? How quickly do the telcos move? This is, this is uh, um, <laughs> An example of one of our smallest telcos out of the 92 we've contracted. We signed, we signed a contract with them and they took a little bit of time to deploy. They had some pent up demand, a couple of percent. They then focused, as every telco would, not on the AI but on the compliance call recording, which they might be four or five percent of their base. And then they made the decision, which I referred to earlier, which is to actually bundle call recording as a feature for a section of their offerings to the higher end. And so with this particular telco, we have 24% 20, of their business customer base subscribing to the service whether they use it or not. We find from telcos that anything between 4 and 11% are the, are, the, are the figures that they work on and we use their figures when we, whenever we talk to investors. So it really is based on the profile of the telco. Either way, when you do the numbers across 92 telcos, it's a decent figure, whichever way you pick it. At the moment, we have 35 billing telcos. I would say to you that less than half a dozen of them have got any level of maturity, so I think the, uh, the opportunity in all the telcos, even from a recording perspective, is ahead of us. Obviously, recording is, if you like, the Trojan horse towards uh, data capture, and I'm sure uh, all around the Morgan's network you're, saw, you're seeing artificial intelligence become a frequently used term, whether it be companies looking for funding or representation, and we're finding that a lot of these companies who are looking to provide AI are trying and looking to integrate their platform into Dubber because at the end of the day, whether it's IBM or a smaller company, we, prevent, we, we present a data set which is valuable for them in order to actually expedite their own value and their own business plan. So to sum up, our goal is to carry on moving towards the 650 telcos. We believe that any network that we're on will be hard to impossible to displace. Uh, the telco won't want to do it. And the minute that any end users integrate their CRM or their trading platform into our Dubber platform, it's almost impossible for the telco to want to remove those customers. 
probably leave you with an end user case which relates to you. So if you think about the Australian landscape for broking financial services, it's actually unregulated in this market compared with uh, the UK, Europe and, and uh, the US. Now, I jokingly say that I can, in, in some stockbroking firms, not Morgan's obviously, I can clear a room of brokers within a minute by saying we're going to record all your calls. Um, unless you need to, you probably wouldn't choose that option. But our availability across an entire telco network allows you to record a call or part of a call when you want to. And that might be just taking a complex order and sharing it with the person immediately, or it might be um, a particular stock that you're focusing on or a company that you're representing from a corporate perspective and you want to be able to reference that going forward. So the whole idea of Dubber is to give blanket coverage, blanket opportunity, but the control is always held by the user, whether that be the basic call recording or the AI function that goes across the top of it. And I come back to the starting position. The whole concept here is, whilst it sounds simple, we, we expect that people can just simply contact their telco and switch on a service immediately, and it works straight away. That is not available today through anyone else other than Dubber at scale, and uh, I think we've made good traction, as you see in our half year lease, um, in the past year, where I think we've delivered on the targets we've set, and hopefully we'll look to continue it over the, the, uh, the coming year as well.